Futures Radio Show, sponsored by CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse futures and options exchange. CME Group's markets help individuals and businesses around the world effectively manage risk. For access to free educational tools and resources for the active individual trader, please visit activetrader.cmegroup.com. Every day, traders and investors dive in to tackle the ever-changing markets to find opportunity. Futures Radio Show is your number one source for answers to the questions that all market participants want to ask. Veteran futures trader Anthony Crudelli sits down with the most influential leaders and top traders in the industry. Now, here's your host, Anthony Crudelli. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in for this episode with Jeff Davis. Remember, new shows are posted on Mondays and Thursdays. You could subscribe to the show on iTunes and YouTube. If you're enjoying the show, please leave a review on iTunes. Before I play today's interview for you, I want to give a shout out to the great sponsors of Futures Radio Show. CME Group, Trading Technologies, FTSE Russell, RJO Futures, and Top Step Trader. To learn more about these sponsors and the important things they are doing for Futures Traders, be sure to click on their logos on futuresradioshow.com. Today, I spoke with independent trader Jeff Davis. We discussed the importance of sticking with a strategy, getting to know your strategy versus having strategy drift, developing mental and statistical edge, refining your trade execution skills, and last but not least, we discussed comparing your trading stats to your strategy's stats. So without further ado, let me take you right to the interview with Jeff. Jeff, I wanted to kick off today's show with a tweet that I put out the other day where I wrote, switching strategies or searching for a strategy that's working right now was one of the biggest mistakes that I personally made. I believe that everything works sometimes. Nothing works all the time. When your strategy is working, I've always believed, not always, but I, I believe that you need to keep trading and trade more aggressively. And when things aren't working, you need to just trade less or, or, or don't trade at all. Don't search for a new strategy every time your strategy is not working. What are your thoughts on that? Well, Anthony, first of all, um, when I developed my strategy, one of the ways that I went about developing it was I read a quote from Jeff Bezos where he said, everybody's always focused on what things are going to change too. And he focused his two major tenants on what wasn't going to change. So he believed that people were never going to want to pay more. They were going to be happy for a good price and they were never going to want slower delivery. So, you know, faster delivery times was always going to be desirable. So he focused on what wasn't going to change. And that's kind of where I went with my strategy. So that really helps in that of searching for a strategy because the whole foundation of when I was looking to build a systematic strategy came from this is most likely not going to change or change very fast going forward. And that's really helped a lot because strategy drift is deadly, really crushes P&Ls when you get strategy drift. Oh, I did it for two years at the beginning of my career. Uh, you know, fibs today, trend lines. Oh, they're working. Let me buy this one on a 15 minute. Now, we've been through this, Jeff. You and I have been through trying all sorts of different things. I think that the mistake that many new traders make is the same one that we made by doing that, going about and searching for something and what's working today, as opposed to just finding a strategy that they liked and sticking with it. How did you finally set in and say, this is the strategy that I'm going to use? Because like I said, everything works sometimes, nothing works all the time. We, I think we all finally get to the point where we realize that and we say, this is it. This is what I'm going to use. I just looked for, like I said, I looked for the one tenant and I figured markets were always going to have a high, low and a close. So I wanted to learn something about one of those and be better at it than anybody else. And then everything that affected it ended up being low of the day. So I knew I was going to be a long side only trader when it was, you know, come to about setting lows of the day. And I really dove in onto it and learned everything I could about lows of the day, when they're set, how they're set, the volume, the range, and really then started to decipher down and throw out all the extraneous stuff that wasn't going to have an effect on that. And then 
build all my true false statements. And that's when you become systematic, that's a really hard thing is everything has to be like true false. You, you got to get rid of the gray. And that's the way it just has to be done. And it was a, it was hard and it took a while. And now I've been through all the cycles. So I know when my strategy is likely going to struggle a little bit versus when it should really be, you know, knocking it out of the park. And then I can use my sizing in that according to that. And there's always little variations in it. So I always say the market's building a roller coaster that we don't know the exact configuration of the roller coaster, but it's always going to be up, downs and cycles. So just go with it that way. So to me, you had great self-awareness as to what you liked and what you felt you could be aggressive with when a situation presented itself and something to where also to where if it wasn't working the opposite, you felt that you just didn't have to trade. Yes. Or trade like a, a lot less, you know, first of all, let's just make clear. I'm trading the ES, the spy, you're trading an index. So there is a mean reverting, you know, tendency that's very high and that was a big part of it also. So I knew the way I was looking at it, you know, long only was going to work out better than it would have maybe in a, in a commodity. It's just strictly, you know, basic materials, commodity type thing. So, you know, it's just understanding your product, understanding its tendencies, and then looking for what you're going to build an entry around and understanding how those tendencies will play into it, where they'll help it, where they'll hinder it and going from there. And yes, I agree with you 100%, Anthony, everything the you know, the, I've seen solar lunar systems, and I believe everything can work 30% of the time. And you know, the, the problem is when you're only going to be right 30% of the time, you got to have a lot bigger winners and you do losers. And mentally, it's very hard to handle the drawdowns and the funky distributions that can lead to drawdown when you're only going to be right 30% of the time. Talk to us about some of the things that you've done over the years to refine your execution. I look for things that can help me make it more systematic since I would still be executing by hand. Because when you're executing by hand, there's always going to be those signals that are very uncomfortable. And you have to figure out a way to take them. One of the things I use is some sort of volatility aware bands. They're nothing special. Bollinger's, Kelter's, Keltner channels, whichever you desire, whichever you know better, feel better about, doesn't matter. But mine are set where I know that they're going to contain intraday on a one minute chart, you know, 95% of the price action. So there's my signal. And we're at, let's say, the top band. I will probably not execute right away. I will look for a little pullback because I know that band is most likely going to contain that price action for at least a couple minutes. If it doesn't, I know I got to bite the bullet and I'm going to be taking an entry at a, you know, a little disadvantage from what I could have. So that will affect my sizing because my risk will be a little bigger. And I just try to keep it simple like that. You, you know, figure out a way to do stuff in a more systematic, not always discretionary. Oh, I got to make the proper decision because the urge to be right will cause you to not hit it when it's, when it's uncomfortable. You won't take the entry. So one of the major things that you've done to refine your execution is to make it more systematic. Yep. Decision. When you're more systematic, you've done your work and you're just, you know, you, you, I don't want to say back testing because I'm not a huge fan of back testing, but you've done your work and you should be confident in your work so you can just execute. You're not having to sit there and say, you know, discretionary traders, whenever you hit the keys in my mind, when I was discretionary, it's because you think you're going to be right at that point. As a systematic trader, when I hit the key for entry, I know that there's a good chance I'm not going to be right, but it's already been taken into account. So it just allows me to stick with the strategy without that constant pressure of I'm going to be right. And you do your work off of the screen when there's less stress. When you're sitting in front of the flickering ticks, there's always a little bit more stress. So you do your work off the screen and then trust your work and execute your work. You just mentioned doing work off screen. And I want to shift gears a little bit and I want to talk about something I brought up the other day on Twitter and that was developing a mental edge versus a statistical edge. It's great to have both. 
And I think that everybody needs a combination of both. But in my experience, you really have to hone in on one to develop to develop a really strong edge in one or the other. So for me, me for example, I didn't have a really strong statistical edge with my strategy, but I felt I had a very strong mental edge with it. I knew my strategy really well, when to press, when to lay off. I'm curious what you think about this. You've gone more systematic, but I know that you have a very strong mental edge as well. What are your thoughts on developing mental and statistical edge? I would say at this point, I get my mental edge from understanding my statistical edge. So I really, it just allows me to take those uncomfortable trades. And when we're talking about statistical edge, I don't, I'm not necessarily talking about a trade. Oh, this trade has a 70% win probability. It's, it's not that. Well, let me give you one example. On FinTwit all the time, if you look through my tweet stream, you'll see me talking about FinTwit bad closes. Well, I'm a long only trader. I love FinTwit bad closes where we close weak or we close lousy and everybody is like discouraged and they think, you know, automatically it's so obvious we're going to continue lower because that was ugly. Many times on those, I will be a buyer on the other side. Why? One of the things that I have a little mental edge in is I'm comfortable taking a trade just on the basis alone that if, if the risk lines up, I'm not going to be in a crowd. I, you know, hate crowded trades. And when everybody's feeling that way, it means nobody bought the close. So soon, it may not be that I buy actually the close. It may be in the, in the post market after hours. I'm looking for some point though, but I'm looking actively for an entry if I see something because, and that's a mental edge to me because it's, I'm not worried about looking like a fool and I may very well look like a fool, but the risk is fine for looking like a fool. If I end up being right, I get paid three, four, five times what my foolish risk was for looking like a fool. And to me, that comes off of some stat base, but mainly it's just a mental edge of understanding that, well, longs aren't going to be crowded most likely. I'm looking for some exposure. I get it. So because you've gone more systematic and we talked about how you've refined your execution over the years that you've developed mental edge by knowing certain situations when they come up and they may look like they're going to be tough to execute, but because you've seen it so many times, your mental edge is I'm doing this. Yes, exactly. Just to put it bluntly, here's exactly what I think. If, Everybody believes it's a bad close. There's going to be people that went out short and they're holding the famous trailer. I got a piece of my position on because it looks like we're going to go down lower. Well, in this algo driven quantitative market where everybody's trading data is bought and sold and it's no secret to how anybody trades or what's comfortable to trade, most likely overnight, the algos will take a trip north and look for those stops on all those trailers before they head south. And that just plays out time and time again. Is it 90% of the time? No, it's not. But if it's 40% of the time and on that 40%, that means I can make three or four times my risk. That's it, that's a great trade for me. And one thing I know is the long side isn't crowded. Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying the show so far, but I wanna pause and thank one of our sponsors, Trading Technologies. I started using TT in the year 2000, and I love it. It is by far the best trading platform I have ever used, and I've tried a lot of them. With TT, you can trade the global markets from virtually anywhere in the world. They are the world's fastest commercially available futures trading platform. I highly suggest you go try out TT, especially because you can try it for free. Just go to tryttnow.com and set up your account. Do you find that because you trade long only in the ES, that that makes you basically hyper-focused on that one look, on that one strategy? Yes, I, I specialize. Now, um, you know, 95% of my trades are to the long side. I do have a couple systematic trades that are just very quantitative where I will 
take shorts. One is very early in the morning and the other one is very late in the day. And outside of that though, everything is mainly long side. And yes, there is a big comfort. I have been able to find comfort where others will be uncomfortable because I only trade from that side of the market. So there you go back to your, it's a, it's a mental edge. It may only be 20%, but I know when that 20% win happens, it's five to one. So what am I risking? How, what do I have to risk to find out if I can get that five to one? And, you know, that's to me comes a lot from just, I'm always just focused on that side. Exactly. And I want to go back to me in my mental edge because that's all I could speak of is my experience. And that was understanding the situation, having good situational awareness of when my strategy was working really well in the market and taking advantage of it, pressing. Now, I didn't take advantage of all the moments, but a vast majority of them I did. And when the market was not giving me the response I wanted through my strategy, then I just traded less or I didn't trade at all. And I think that so many traders out there look for consistency. They wanna make money every single day, every week, every month. I just find that to be so difficult in in futures markets because I, I just do. I, I just think that grinding every single day, finding a strategy that that produces a result every day, every week, every month. I'm not going to say impossible, but I'm going to say unlikely. And um, for me, it's more about seizing moments. I don't know where you stand on that. Um, I agree with you. And I I know some people that can consistently grind it out every day. Very good. I don't want to call them micro scalpers, but if you're looking for eight to 10 ticks and you can do it with size, then there really isn't a tape that you can't do it in. And that. if you're looking for more than that, more of a, I'm an intraday swing trader and much more of my trading over the last two years has evolved into actually holding intraday buys and holding them into the overnights in that. And to me, then there's going to be definite times where I sit on my hands and I'm not going to be doing that much. And that's a good thing. So back to just like knowing that it takes time and experience. One of the things I'll tell you this, Anthony, that I learned from you is you used to always say, I'm not really going to pound it or push it until I see everything on the same page. And that got me to thinking about, well, when everything isn't on the same page, what are the actions like? And that's where I come up with all my stuff about a divergent tape. And then how does that fit into my strategy? And that helps. And so I know what I, I can see here on days when I'm sitting on my hands and I know you're, you're pressing, <laughs> you know, that's one of the cool things is there's so many different ways to make money in the markets. And you have to understand for you what is going to do it. Now, I would always say, you know, most people say, oh, you have to find what fits your personality. For me, I kind of, over the years, I've kind of put it more to this now. It's you have to find what triggers the defects in your personality and then avoid them. So like that's that. going to lead you, that's going to lead you to the product and the time frame and everything because if every one of us, you're, you're driving along the shoulder at 70, on the road at 70 miles an hour. There's the white line, there's the shoulder, and on the other side of that's a ditch, and it's wet. You've got to avoid, you, you have to know when you get over that white line so you get back in your lane. You have to stay in your lane, and that's what's going to lead you to a strategy and a product in that. I know for me, over trading can bring out the kind of like battle mode in me. Not good. Not good. So everything I've done over these last years is to avoid over trading. And so my strategy is honed towards that. I want to do less. I want to, I want to be able to do it better and eventually do it bigger, but I'm not in a hurry to do it bigger right away, but you need to know what are your emotional defects, your triggers that are going to trigger those, you know, kind of tilt moments in that where you can rip up weeks or months worth of profit after hard work. And that everything in my strategy over these last couple of years is really honed to like, keep me far away from the white line. And I don't mind if I miss a trade here or there, I want to stay away from that white line and just stay in my lane. A lot of what you talk about, Jeff, 
are two words that I believe are, I don't want to use the word abused on, on social media, but they're used an awful lot without anything really behind them. And that's patience and discipline. Because until you know what you're looking for, I think so many people are like, well, be patient for what? And then they're over patient and they just can't find balance, right? And then people are like, well, be disciplined. Well, be disciplined to what? Just my strategy? Yeah, well, you also have to be in, in moments where you need to be really aggressive and you know when not to be. So it's like what you're talking about, what I really like is that you finally found the strategy that you liked. You got to know it really well. And then the patience and the discipline came to back it up. That's how you started refining your execution. Yes. Yes. I, I'm, I'm in total agreement with you. you. You have to understand what you're doing, what you're trying to accomplish. To me, it comes from building like an actual entry signal. And like certain days, I can tell you that there are certain days we're going to be on a gap up. I talk about gap and that. And for me, that means... The market may open and it may go higher. It may be a gap and a go. I know I'm not going to be involved right off of the bat, hoping or betting on a gap and go. My strategy says up gap. I'm waiting for something to take a little down into the gap. Do I know if the gap is going to fill? I could be wrong. No, but that's where I'll sit and wait. I won't be anxious. You know, in certain parts of the regime, I tell guys, listen, when I wake up in the morning, I want to see written on my bathroom mirror, I want to be long today because we're <laughs> in that sweet spot. And that's the first thing I want to read and see when I'm brushing my teeth in the morning or getting the, you know, stuff out of my eyes. I want to see, I want to come in. I'm looking for exposure actively. There's other times where, no, I do not want to see that. I want to. I want to know this regime is a little more unfavorable and I may get a set up. I may not, but I should not be jonesing for one. Hey everybody. I want to take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, FTSE Russell. They are a leading global provider of benchmarks, analytics, and data solutions. The Russell 2000 index is a key benchmark for small cap U S stocks. Be sure to check out the E mini Russell 2000 index futures Contract symbol RTY. For more information on FTSE Russell and their products, please visit FTSERussell.com. Last topic before I let you go, Jeff. And I think this is this all feeds into knowing your strategy and everything works sometimes, nothing works all the time. The question many people, I think many new traders face is what's the difference between a drawdown? and a strategy that just, that just isn't working right now or anymore. And I put out there, it's always us as the trader because going back to my thinking of trying everything, I've seen everything work sometimes and I've seen everything not work sometimes. So I've always learned that it's always us. How do you, how did you know the difference between when you were developing or finding your strategy between a drawdown and then this strategy just, it just isn't right. It, it isn't working. Mainly it did come from stats. I'll be honest. It's just that I know the range of the stats. So let me give you, let's say in one, in my basic strategy, one of the stats I derived and I rely on in 2008, it was the worst and it was still right around 50, 50. In 2017, it was absolutely great. And that stat was more of a 68% stat. So it ranged from, so my strategy, the basic stat that I'm going off of is going to occur between that 2008 worst and 2017 best. And it's going to be from 49% to 67%. And then from there, I can work out what we're looking like and how to how to size how to hold how long am i holding and that within the strategy but that's where the main basis came where you know i know what a worst year looks like and could one be worse yeah you should always figure there could be a bigger drawdown and it's also comes from the wisdom of just being through the strategy now for plenty of cycles. Most people, when you first develop a strategy, let's be honest, it's gonna be loaded with recency bias. Nobody develops a strategy off of something that hasn't been working recently, most likely. 
It's, it's something you've seen work recently and you're watching it and you're not executing on it. And then you go, let me do some stats. Let me do some back testing. And you go, wow, this is actually looks pretty good. And now for this period of time, it's been going on. Now you say, okay, I'm going to start to paper trade it. Well, a little more time goes by. It's still working. Now you say, I'm going to start to, you know, actually, you know, forward trade it. I'm going to put some money on it and it's still working. And then they make the mistake of, oh my God, this is it. I found it. And they go and start to really do some size on it because it's just going to work. And meanwhile, that's right when the cycle is ended because the whole process took you through the cycle of it working well. And now it goes into just a drawdown, but they don't even, they don't realize it because they don't have experience through the cycles. So they, they're just stuck. Is this drawdown or does it not work anymore? I mean, you have to kind of know the windows of your strategy and how long you're going to last. I'll give you an example. I've been around a long time, traded stocks for many, many years in that. One of the little strategies, I don't trade it anymore. I could jump into it and do it is every year, without a doubt, at some point, the low floaters are squeezing and you can jump in and trade them. The low float stocks with high short interest and oh, the market will just start squeezing them. But the window is small. If you watch it for two weeks and then you jump in, you just miss the window. The window's coming down, getting slammed on your fingers now or your head. You know, however deep your body is out trying to get out that window. That's it. But it comes around all the time. And I see it all the time. But I know for me, that wasn't good. I could not. I didn't want to have to be looking for 20 strategies to work throughout the year. I wanted to find one that basically gave me plenty of instances throughout the year to be able to execute on. But you could, if you have ultimate discipline, here's a strategy that I know works two weeks of every year, size up and be the first one in it. Boom. There you go. But they all have windows. And the size of the window, you need to understand and that that's where a lot of mental edge would come. You know when your window is getting a little long in the tooth. So now you may take a little less size. You won't be as aggressive. You won't be sizing up at the wrong time. The window may stay open, but you so you make a little less, but you're not going to make that fatal mistake of sizing up at the wrong time when the window is most likely getting ready to close. I hope that makes sense. It does. I love and agree a lot with what you said. And I want to, I want to give you and everybody one last thought uh, before we go today. When you talk about stats, so I compare everything to trading. So I, I golf a lot <laughs> and I've been, I'm always at the golf store. I work with a guy about fitting me for clubs and, and we're always in communication. Oh, I'm hitting this club this way and that, and we go in and we try to find a club that fits me while I'm on the machine and then I go out and play it. So right now I'm working on a driver, right? And I go there and my current driver, I've been hitting very well, but I was trying to get a little bit more distance out of it. So I went to the person I deal with at the golf store and I said, you know what, I'm going to see if I can get a little bit more distance and, and maybe a little bit more, uh, 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 less of a miss on my pulls. Okay. So it gives me this golf club and I take it and I go out. And now this club I'm hitting on the machine, stats-wise, a lot better than I'm hitting my existing club. So stats-wise, the spin is right, the launch is right, uh, everything fits exactly the way I swing. I go out, I'm hitting it shorter, and my misses are worse. <laughs> now, whether that may be just me right now with the club or not, but one thing that I have learned is that, in going back to trading, if I find a strategy that maybe doesn't have the best stats, but I know in certain moments that that look, I am more confident with the execution of it, then that's a better strategy for me. So going back yes. to a golf club, the golf club that they're giving me that gives me all of the stats that fit me, that fit my profile exactly, I am not swinging it the same way I swing this other club. And so I am going to go back <laughs> to the other club because I'm hitting it better. And, and, and just when I look at, when, when I hear you talk about stats, I just want everybody out there to, to think about this. It's, you could have stats in a strategy, and then you could have stats in the way that you execute a strategy. I think it's important to look at both because you might surprise yourself and a strategy with worse stats, you might get more out of. If it's 
completely uncomfortable to you and you're never going to be able to, to execute it, then it doesn't matter what the stats are. So in some respects, in many respects, it has to line up with, you know, yes, over time, you're going to be able to be what's uncomfortable to most will be a little more comfortable to you. And that's where you have to lead to, but it has to be something that doesn't put you on tilt also, like I talked about me shorting tends to become a little more addictive to me and I can get in a battle shorting and it didn't end well. So what do I do? Find a strategy, know that that's a defect in my personality, know that no matter what the stats say, that when they're working, I've just got to avoid it. And that's what I did. Put that club back in the bag. It's a 20 yard fairway. Get out the five wood. Who cares about 20 extra yards when you, yep. if you missed a fairway? That's it. Put it in the bag. Not only know your strategy, know yourself, everybody. Jeff, this was awesome. Uh, Jeff, where could people find you on Twitter and give us a website to check out? On Twitter, uh, Shaq48 underscore trading. And I don't have a website, but I write some blogs, which I've been meaning to write more of and going to be putting some stuff up. And that's on medium.com. So you can just Google Shaq48 trading medium.com and you'll come up with a whole bunch of blog stuff. Yeah, Jeff, we need you blogging more, man. You always put out great posts. I'll be sure to put the link to your blog uh, in the post, everybody. So be sure to check it out. Jeff, thank you again so much for coming on Futures Radio Show. Always a pleasure, Anthony. Always a pleasure. Thank you for listening to Futures Radio Show. If you have any questions or comments for myself or my guests, please visit futuresradioshow.com and sign up to be a premium member for free. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to leave us a review on iTunes.